Okay, kids, here we go. We're gonna attempt to put together the small. So let me first show you what I have here. Can you tell what it is? Any guesses? Let me show you. Sorry for the glare. It's the middle of the day, the blinds are wide open. Actually, it's later in the day. What time? Oh, I didn't put my watch back on. Yikes. It's probably about, well, I can look on here. It's 314. So it's much later in the day. I'm up in the loft. It's warm. But I want to get this done because if I, if, I if I put it off, I'll keep putting it off. So I need to get it done. Okay. So this is from um, the Cross Stitcher May 2019 issue. I did show this on one of my flip throughs. I believe the designer is Emma Congdon, the same one who designed the Aloha pattern, Stitch Robia. So this is what I mean. This is, I'm not very experienced with just plain pillows, <laughs> let alone something like this. So the called for materials are 14 count Ada. And then the colors, the DMC colors are 742 and 801. I think I, I used, I have them here. I did use 801. That is there. But 742 seemed to me a more um, orangey yellow. So this is actually 744. I thought this was more appropriate for a pineapple. So that's what we have here. So I need to stitch up this seam along here. And you will see that the pattern should match up. <laughs> I have ironed it, I have cut off the extra, and I have ironed on some light interfacing on the back. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and um, start the seaming process. Then I have to do a gathering stitch around the bottom to gather it in. I have some felt that I'm going to glue around the bottom. I have to cut out a little circle yet and glue it around the bottom. And then I think I'm also gonna stitch. I don't know whether I'll do a buttonhole stitch or just a whip stitch. After that, the directions say to put some rice in the bottom to give it some weight and then stuff it and then we'll go from there with the top. So um, I'm gonna switch you around and start working on the stitching. Okay. Did I? I don't even know whether I said this is Jan Hicks Creates at the beginning. <laughs> but I think you all know that. If you're here, you probably know who I am. Um, yeah, I'm just a little bit nervous about this. So, and I also didn't mention, so I said that it was called for was the 14 count Ada. Um, I am using, I used a 32 count. So the, the measurements that she mentions in the pattern are going to be a little bit off for me, but um, she doesn't really give good, like, trim the fabric to, you know, so far out and let, you know, leave however many inches. She doesn't say anything about, anything about trimming off the extra over here, how much to leave. So in that regard, I am just winging it. So I, um, I matched up the stitching as much as I could by just kind of like, you know, going like this and, and putting them together and pinned it. So hopefully that is going to keep it in place. And now I'm just going to do a stitch. And yes, I am hand stitching this. I could get the machine out and do it on the machine. But you know something? I just think this is just as easy. By the time I get the machine out and get it set up, I can be halfway done with this. So I don't know what this stitch is called that I'm doing. Um, I'm sure it has a name. I'm trying to get, keep the stitches fairly close together and I think I'm failing miserably actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh you poor person getting this. <laughs> Please forgive me. So I'm, I'm trying to like go under three of the linen threads, but um, 
and I'm using a sharp one of the um, one of these needles that I just had sitting here that I showed you the other day I don't know if it's the right needle for the job or anything but um, it's working so I have to go through the interface on both sides and the linen um, so yeah I'm just kind of doing this I'm sure there's a name for this stitch and I probably knew it at one point in my life, but it is not coming to my brain right now. So just right down along the stitching on both sides. Now that is appearing to be a little bit over on that side. Oh, see that? All right. Um, see if I can peek down in here and see how it's looking yeah can you see I'm getting too far away here so I'm gonna take out those last actually that's not lined up at the top either all right I'm gonna take this out and redo it I'm not gonna torture you <laughs> with watching through all of this so I will be back when I have this seam done Okay, so I have my seam done. I turned my ot light on because um, I, I needed the light. It is not perfect, not by a long shot. Um, I did um, trim off the excess down to a quarter inch seam allowance and um, I did iron it flat a little bit. I didn't want to do too much because I didn't want to iron, you know, have the edges of the, of the stitching ironed. So it's not perfect but um you can see the stitches in there a little bit but heck it's uh it's personalized <laughs> right <laughs> okay so the next thing that the directions say to do is to make a running stitch around the bottom about five eighths inches down from the bottom of the stitching now again that's on 20 or on 14 count ada i used 32 count um linen so I'm going to do it about a half inch down. So that puts me about there. Maybe I'll drop it down. Shoot, I keep bumping you. Maybe I'll drop it down a little bit more. So I had to look up the directions for a running stitch because I've never done a running stitch and I don't know um, I only looked at one video, so there's probably better ones out there, but um, I don't know how much seam allowance you leave for these, um, you know, how much I really need for this. So this may, this may be too much down here. I don't know. Like I said, the, the directions, unfortunately, are not very clear on this. So I'm going to go about a quarter of an inch apart on this one. I don't know again if that's enough or not enough or if it matters. I'm sure there are many of you out there who are more experienced than me in this kind of thing who are actually seamstresses or have the experience, but we shall see. Again, I'm just using that same sharp hemming needle that I used for the to stitch up the seam and yeah it probably would have been quicker to pull out the sewing machine but it was really kind of um, a bugger to keep whoops, to keep the seams matched up I, I finally had to kind of on each stitch look at the bottom look at the top look in between to make sure that I was staying on the right line so um, a sewing machine, I don't know what I would have ended up with a sewing machine. I actually didn't see what you need to do. That one video, like I said, was fairly short. And I didn't see what you needed to do to end the running stitch. But 
first let's pull it and see if it does what it's supposed to do. Alrighty, and all that has to be inside there. There more or less <laughs> is the bottom of my pumpkin. Now needless to say, I need to fix this up. So I'm going to turn you off and do that and I will be back. Okay guys, I have to admit I'm feeling rather inadequate to the task. I'm kind of ashamed to show my bottom, but it's going to be seen at some point by by the recipient. So um, yeah, the gathering and the stuffing and the securing wasn't the easiest thing to do, especially for somebody as inexperienced as I am. Like I said, I had felt that I cut out a little circle and put it on. That is not uneven either. <laughs> God, I'm sorry whoever gets this. I hope you like it regardless. But, I mean, it's not bad. It's cute. All right, so the next step is stuffing it. So I'm using some rice that we have uh, to add some weight to the bottom. And then I just have the regular polyfill stuff that um, I will be stuffing it with. I got these leaves to add to the top. So that is next. I have to do that gathering again at the top. Huh. I'll be back. Okay, so I have the rice down in the bottom and I probably put, I don't know, maybe half an inch of rice down in and it's holding it pretty securely. I think that's good. Um, boy, I look frazzled. <laughs> I am frazzled. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of doing the Vana method of, you know, pulling apart the uh, stuffing and then stuffing it down in. So, I mean, I think that's a nice, it actually is a nice sturdy little thing. What do you think? I think it's cute. I was thinking that I would put some um, rice in between the layers too, but I don't think I need to. I think I'll put a little bit more stuffing in. Now, oh, I forgot. Glad I didn't forget till after I sealed it up. The leaves. Now, my plan for these was just to use some of the smaller middle ones. but I wanted to use the stem. The instructions say to use a pencil and to cut a pencil the size of this and stick it down in the middle. And then that's what you, like the, their, the sample has leaves cut out of felt and attached to the pencil stem. I wanna just use this. So I'm gonna have to get my wire cutters, which are around here someplace, and mess with this a bit. So I will be back. All right, so this is what I have so far. I think this is going to work. Now I just have to do that running stitch and gather it so that this gathers up around this. And maybe glue some on the outside. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I'll be back. All right. So this is what I have so far with the fabric tightened around. Now what I've discovered is, number one, I kind of like it. You're supposed to tuck the extra fabric down in. I don't know that I will. Number one, it's a pain in the butt to do that. Number two, I kind of like it up like that. But what I did discover is that I need to put more stuffing in here. This is kind of um, not as poofy as the rest. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna fasten off. I don't have the um, I don't have the running stitch fastened off yet, which is what I'm holding here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna fasten that off and then I might just glue or stitch. I don't know whether I can stitch through whatever plasticky material this is, but I might just glue those on 
outside this fabric and call it done. All right, wish me luck. All right, next step. It's all gathered around the top. I did leave the fabric out. It's stuffed pretty, pretty compactly with the rice at the bottom. The seam is visible. It's just the way it is. Just keep it turned this way. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put the other leaves on and then we'll be done. Okay, so. Not too bad for somebody that doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> it's not perfect. The bottom's wonky. And the top, so I stitched on these outer leaves. And I don't, I am not happy with the stitches showing. So I actually cut off some little pieces and I'm gonna glue these on to here so that they will cover up those stitches. So, almost done. I'll be back. Okay, so it is a couple days later. Um, had to let the glue dry. It was dry yesterday, but I didn't have my act together yesterday to show you the finished product. It is not perfect. I'm not happy with the seam still. I did kind of glue extra pieces around the top to cover up those stitches, and I think that works. And then I got these kind of colorful pins. I'm gonna get another pack so that it's covered with the pins. But I think overall, it turned out to be awfully cute. So that is my small for StitchCon. Now I'm also going to include a lay that Dee helped me make. So, kind of Hawaii themed, right? I think that works. Anyways, guys, I don't know whether this tutorial was helpful or not, <laughs> whether it was more scattered or, um, like I said, a comedy routine more than anything, but I'm happy with it. Mostly, I'm happy that it's done. I'll talk to you guys on my regular stuff. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.